What meaning means after leaving organized religion? I am confident in claiming that you, reader or listener, at some point in your life have experienced moments of self-realization where you in your own way consciously observe that you are a living, breathing human being who can make choices that have consequences. I am also confident in claiming that during these moments or in reflection of these moments, you have encountered some, if not all, of the following questions in some form. Why am I here? Is there a purpose for my existence? If so, what is it? If so, how do I discover it? Or is there no inherent purpose to my being here? How am I supposed to know? Can I know? Who will teach me? Or is there anything for me to be taught? And I could go on. In fact, in my head I have gone on. And on and on and on until I feel the need to reach for my phone or Xbox controller to graciously distract myself from falling further into the damp, darkened well that is existential dread. Written and oral histories show us that intense levels of introspection have plagued people for centuries, and that in response, individuals, many claiming enlightenment of some sort, have produced solutions to life's most mind-melting mysteries. Desperate for internal respite, research into these answers can leave someone more confused than they were before. Quickly, anxiety, fear, and panic follow and feelings of sorrow, hopelessness, and loneliness. Uh, bummer alert, my bad. Welcome to this week's Little Whims essay. I promise the vibe will shift soon. I just need to set the stage for everything I want to talk about coming up. And while I'm speaking with you like this, I want to make some things clear before heading into the next part of this piece. I'm going to share things that have benefited me. While I sincerely hope something I say helps you and makes you think, because I want to help you and make you think, I cannot guarantee that it will. I can only speak from and for my own experience. With that, let's keep going. Growing up religious, I was taught that our personal, particular circumstances on this planet are no accident. My life is a gift. My life has a plan. My life has a purpose. In heaven it began. Before I knew how to tie my shoes or how to spell my name, I knew the origin of my soul, how and why I am now on earth, and I knew where I could go, according to my commitment to God's plan, once I die. But as I got older, I had more questions, and the answers I received didn't make sense. And the answers I had repeatedly heard since childhood no longer provided peace and comfort, at least not in the same way they once had. Ultimately, I decided that the Mormon church and I were no longer a good fit, and I left. But I didn't just leave a building. I left behind the certainty the teachings of my former faith offered to me. I said goodbye to all I knew about my purpose, fate, and destiny, and stepped, more like stumbled, into a space I knew nearly nothing about, inching forward toe by toe with Tantor-like timidness. As genuinely terrifying as new and untouched territory can be, it also provides the chance to explore, learn, grow, and become. In the years since leaving organized religion, I have developed the belief that life alone has no grand, predetermined meaning. I believe each person has the opportunity to make meaning for themselves. I no longer see meaning to be a universal creation of a greater being above us, but an internal design crafted by each of us, for each of us, within each of us. I no longer believe in one right way to live, but many right ways, subject to change, as we inevitably change. What makes life mean something to me may not make life mean something to you, and that's okay. Great, even. Like taste buds, what my consciousness wants differs from your consciousness. Yet there is, unsurprisingly, crossover. Again, like taste buds, while each of us possess a unique combination of likes and dislikes for specific recipes and flavors, many of us enjoy the same foods. In preparation for this essay, I asked my Instagram followers what makes life meaningful to them. I received a good amount of responses, and if you provided one of them, thank you. The most popular response to what makes life most meaningful was connection. Whether it was connecting with someone, family, friends, pets, with something, nature, movies, art, or with the doing of something, writing, reading, exercising, the appreciation and desire for connection was clear. This doesn't surprise science. One study found that people crave connection as much as they crave food. 
Research suggests social connection is an evolutionary need and a provider of invaluable health benefits. Studies have also found that hobbies lower stress levels, improve our well-being, and make it easier to meet like-minded individuals. People need people, and people need things. And when we connect with good people and good things, for many of us, meaning is made. It's easy to slip into existential dread. The way of existing can be overwhelming. But I believe we can listen to our minds, tap into the conscious and subconscious, and create a life that means something. Whatever means, means to you and to me. If we surround ourselves with people and animals we love and adore, and find activities that fulfill our interests, I believe we can go from simply existing to enjoying existing in our own way.